What I am going to do in this session is to give you an idea about the content and the process of this workshop. So it will give you a feel of what all we are going to cover in these eight days and also give you a feel of what is going to be the process by which we will do this workshop. So, the title I have kept is Holistic Development and Role of Education. So, we will try to understand what is this holistic development. We will also try to understand what is the role of education in ensuring this holistic development. And all these eight days we will go on you know, exploring this in further detail. So, as I said, in this session I just want to give you a feel of the content and the process of this workshop. <coughs> so whatever I am going to say is a proposal for you and you don't assume it to be true. You verify it, explore it within yourself on the basis of your natural acceptance. So very simple. My job is very simple in the sense that I have to just put forward the proposals which I intend to and ask you to explore within yourself, <coughs> verify you know, on your own right as to whether it is right for you or not right for you. And this process of self-verification, self-exploration is very simple. To begin with, you just have to start asking whether this is naturally acceptable to you or not naturally acceptable to you. Whether it is your natural acceptance or it is not your natural acceptance. For example, if I ask you what is naturally acceptable to you to be in relationship or to be in opposition? Right? So very simple thing to do. Okay. Just ask yourself. Okay? Whether relationship is naturally acceptable to you, you have acceptance, natural acceptance for relationship or for opposition. And you get the answer. Okay. So, very simple thing to do to begin with. Okay. And as we go along, we'll see, we can also investigate into much, you know, kind of complex looking things. Okay. on the basis of our natural acceptance. So let me repeat this again. I am just you know, trying to give you an idea of the content and the process of this workshop. You know, all that we are going to talk about in these eight days. So I have said that whatever I am going to say or you know, place before you, is in the form of a proposal which you do not have to assume to be true. What you need to do is to explore within yourself, investigate within yourself and find out if it is right for you or not right for you. And that self-exploration is very simple for you to begin with. All that you need to do is to find out whether it is naturally acceptable to you or not naturally acceptable to you. Does it come under your natural acceptance or does it not come under your natural acceptance? So one of the examples which I have just said and taken that if you ask yourself what is your natural acceptance? To be in relationship or to be in a position? Is there anybody who thinks you cannot decide on this? <laughs> Sir, I am quite confused. I am quite confused. Ah. What do you think? What is naturally acceptable to you? To be in relationship or to be in a position? There are a uh, lot of forces you know, that, that are active. Some are in coalition, but some are in opposition. So it is, it is in all directions. I think it's for him. But I can deeply think inside. True. But tell me, given the choice, right? What will you go for? 
relationship or opposition? So you will like to go for relationship, but because of the many circumstances or many, many forces acting around, you <coughs> you feel forced to go for opposition. But that is not is not what is your willingness, right? And that's what is happening with most of us that we are getting into things which are not naturally acceptable to us. And we will see later that that is the sole cause of unhappiness. The sole cause of unhappiness is contradiction within our own self. And this contradiction within our own self can finally be located here that I am doing things which are not naturally acceptable to me. So I have to be in opposition for many reasons whatsoever and it is not naturally acceptable to me to be in opposition. Therefore when I am thinking of opposing others, I am in a state of unhappiness. I keep taking this example that if you are thinking of taking revenge from someone, for two years, two years you are planning, two hours you are planning and at the end of two hours you drop the idea because you think that's not worth it. Now what happens? These two hours you are happy, unhappy. Unhappy, right? Eh? And the other person doesn't even know about it. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, these two hours have been the hours of unhappiness. So, though you are thinking of opposing others, you know, thinking of taking revenge, but if you ask yourself whether this feeling of opposition, a feeling of taking revenge, is naturally acceptable to you, not naturally acceptable to you. What is it? Not acceptable. Not acceptable, right? So you are doing a thing which is not naturally acceptable to you. Mm -hmm. Therefore you are con in contradiction with you. Therefore you are in a state of unhappiness. It is regard of whether the other person comes to know about it or it does not come to know about it. So, uh, there is one thing, that, um, from uh, an evolutionary point of view, uh, we have to always get uh, what we should get. And if we do that, if we work towards that, then there is always an op uh, a group of forces, you know, that oppose that. They, uh, suppose in the animal kingdom, uh, you know, they keep on evolving. Because the, the circumstances are changing, there are many forces outside. So, uh, from uh, a natural uh, evolution point of view, there are many forces that that, that act uh, so that you know we achieve the desired desired goal, desired result, uh, or the desired form of uh, the the particular uh, entity or the animal or whatever. So uh, if that is the case, which is the underlying uh, theory, uh, underlying uh, principle on which the whole university, uh, whole universe works, uh, if that is the case, then you know there will be tremendous, uh, uh, there will be a, a tremendous number of forces that oppose each other, and uh, many of them will be only a few of them will be in coalition. So if that is the case, then there is uh, more anarchy than. You know, the, uh, the union and for that matter, the relationship would be the result, which is what we want, is probably uh, uh, not there. Yeah, it is, it is really interesting, you know. I mean, <coughs> some of these things like you know, achieving goal. Right? Now, as a human being, <coughs> have we been able to decide what is our goal? So that's one question we addressed to, right? Then, in order to achieve the goal, we have to have all this right? relationship. Is it possible to be for us to be in harmony, or we essentially need to be in opposition? <coughs> that we need to explore. Then, you know, you said this word universe, right? The way universe is working. Do we need to understand how the universe is working? How the whole reality, the existence, you know, is 
After all, you know, what is, is it in harmony? Is it in opposition? All these things will have to be explored, investigated. And that's what we are going to do. You know. Starting from the human being, right? we'll talk about the, you know, try to understand the relationship in family, try to understand the order, you know, the harmony in society, then the nature and finally the existence. All that will have to be understood. So what we are doing, we are trying to begin our exploration, you know, with our own self, <coughs> trying to find out what is our natural acceptance. Then we will further investigate and find out whether it is possible for us to live with what is our natural acceptance. Or is it necessary for us to get into contradiction, get into opposition, get into a struggle. So all that we will investigate. In fact, somehow we have been made to believe that there is struggle all around. Right? And if you have to be successful, you have to push through. That is the belief that has been propagated through education. And we will investigate into that also. Whether the nature, the existence, the universe is essentially in harmony or essentially in contradiction. Right? Essentially in relationship or <coughs> essentially in opposition. So all that we will have to investigate. So we will see whether it is possible for us to live in relationship or is it that we are doomed to be in opposition. But let us first find out what is our natural acceptance, to be in relationship, to be in opposition. Then we will see whether it is possible to be in relationship or is it essential for us to get into, you know, opposition because that's the way the nature is, that's the way the reality is. So, natural acceptance is for relationship or for opposition? At least each one of us can decide you know, for <coughs> itself right, as to what is naturally acceptable. So I was just saying that look into your natural acceptance and on the basis of that try to find out okay, whether whatever being said, whatever is being said here is true for you, not true for you. If it is in natural acceptance, you know, is it, it is in accordance with your natural acceptance, then it is true for you. If it is not in accordance with your natural acceptance, it is not true for you. So that's the way each one of us can verify right? whether whatever being said here is true or not true for you. Good. <coughs> so let's ask this question. What is the role of education? I will give one definition. You tell me whether it is correct or not correct. The role of education is to facilitate the development of the competence to live with human conduct. supposed to make you competent to live with definite human conduct or not. <coughs> In fact, if you look at the you know, things around, the human beings are suffering from three types of fear. One is the fear of natural calamity. Second is the fear of wild animals. Third is the fear of inhuman behavior of human beings. Right? What do you think? Which one of them is more 
prominent student. Third one, right? Yes. We have more or less taken care of the natural calamities, right? So if there is raining outside or there is some wind or you know storm, we can still sit here and discuss. Right? So natural calamity is not very big thing now. Wild animals, what do you think? Now the wild animals have to hear from us. Or we have to hear from the wild animals. <laughs> so that is also taken care of. What about the fear of inhuman behavior of human being? Is it on increase or decrease? Increase. increase. Right? This is very interesting. This is on the increase. And what are you doing to take care of this? Education. What do you think? Our education today makes you competent to live with definite human conduct or your conduct becomes more uncertain when you go through the education. When you go through the education today, right, your conduct becomes more certain or more uncertain. For example, so many corruption, of, so many, you know, kind of complain of corruption <coughs> in the society. Okay. Is it done more by the educated people or uneducated people? <laughs> behavior of human being is on the increase, right? So if you look at the traditional societies, they seem to be relatively more peaceful, right, than the modern society. Right? They exhibit more definiteness in their behavior, right, in their relationship, than the so-called modern educated society. So this is on the increase, right? We have terrorism, we have war, right? Like that's uh, was telling that the twentieth century has been the century of blood shed and war. So this fear has increased or decreased? So, if you want to ensure this, the human conduct, the certain human behavior in the society, then what do you need to do? That is the question. Before I respond to that, the another uh, question that I would ask is that if you look around in nature, then every unit in nature right, has a definite conduct. So if you look at a tree, right, a pine tree, it has a definite conduct, indefinite conduct. Definite conduct, right? That is how you can identify a pine tree. A cow has a definite conduct, indefinite conduct. Definite conduct, right? Yeah. What about human being? <laughs> And this is the most interesting thing, you know, that the and the human being is supposed to be the most developed, you know, especially in nature, right? the most developed unit in nature, and it is, you know, exhibiting an indefinite conduct as compared to other units 
Vichara is the lower order. <coughs> if you ask yourself, what is your natural acceptance? To have a definite conduct, certain conduct, or uncertain conduct? You want to live with definite conduct or indefinite conduct? Definite conduct. Definite conduct. Right? Definite conduct, ideally. Ideally, you want to Yeah, that's our natural acceptance. Whether it is possible for us to do it or not is what we will explore further. But at least we must be sure what we are, you know, wanting to do. What is our natural acceptance? But this definite conduct I was thinking, uh, if we ask ourselves, definite conduct means if you know how to behave, how to do things, then we are happier. Is that what you mean? But if we are uncertain how to react to certain situations, definitely we are in misery. Uh, you know, you have got fear, anxiety. <coughs> Is that what you mean when you yeah. say definite conduct? So For example, yeah. if I have to live in relationship with other human beings, right, I will live with the feeling of respect or disrespect, or uncertainty. Right. Right. That certainty is required. Right. Similarly, feeling of trust or distrust. That certainty is required, which makes me happy. Right? To live with that certainty and also make others happy in relationship. I may have different forms of expressing this <coughs> respect. So one society may have one form of expression, the other society may have another form of expression. <coughs> but what is essential in relationship, you know, between human beings, is this feeling of respect, this feeling of trust. That certainty is always required, that is always desirable. That is what is naturally acceptable to us. <coughs> Therefore, if we do otherwise, it causes us unhappiness, the contradiction within, and it also causes unhappiness to the others. So this is interesting <coughs> that the most developed unit in nature Right? seems to exhibit an indefinite conduct. But it is also good that when we ask ourselves what is our natural acceptance, it turns out that we do want to have definite human conduct. Right? If that is what we want, right? then how do we go about it? So if you look at this, all these things in nature, we have things like you know, soil and water and things like that. Okay. Then you have plants, then you have animals, then you have music. If you look at the plant order, for example, its conduct is decided by the seed. So as long as you are able to maintain the seed of the plant, right, it will show a very definite conduct. Okay. <coughs> Similarly, the conduct of the animal order is decided by the breed. So a cow will have a definite conduct, right? A lion will also have a definite conduct, depending on its breed. So as long as breed is maintained, right, its conduct is definite. But when you talk about human being, right, the conduct of a human being is decided by his education and sanskar. So if he is getting a human education and sanskar, he will live with human conduct. If you are giving an education which is inhuman nature, right, then he will live with inhuman behavior, inhuman conduct. So the conduct of a human being is not decided by the seed or by the breed, right? It is decided by the education and sanskar. What is sanskar? Sanskar, education is, the meaning of education is to understand. And the meaning of sanskar is to live with it. Mm -hmm. So 
So understanding and living accordingly. Sir, I have a small question. Yes. Uh, when we, uh, when we When we were studying uh, uh, in the school, we basically were taught uh, that uh, the, the aim of uh, such an education was so that uh, we can do away with a lot of undesirable behavior of uh, behavior as human beings. But as we grow older, technology changes. Technology has uh, brought a lot of any other uh, undesirable uh, events surrounding us. So because of that, uh, some of the teachings that, uh, some of the uh, experience that we acquired through a uh, series of education in our young age, uh, young age are basically now irrelevant, becoming irrelevant. So we change the school curriculum and then also teach the student in a, in a, in a, in a different manner. Uh, for example, nowadays, uh, actually I don't know that much about uh, how the education system works uh, uh, these days, but uh, in order to correct, in order to uh, bring our uh, children as a responsible citizen in the future, uh, curriculum, uh, curricula uh, design that we are teaching are also done in that manner. But unfortunately, two, three years or maybe uh, five years, ten years down the line, different technologies would come, different uh, events shaping the world Occur. And then it will render the, uh, the educational experience the children of today will carry as adults in that age. Uh, it will become uh, more or less irrelevant. So, and this uh, human, inhuman behavior of uh, human beings will crop up in many of the uh, adults at that point in time. So, we are at a dilemma. Yeah, but that is very interesting, you know. What do you think? The human being has to decide for technology. Or technology has to decide for human being. <laughs> <laughs> and this is surprising. What is happening is that the technology is deciding how we are going to live. Rather than we deciding what kind of technology we will develop and how we will use the technology. And that is taking place because the very fundamental need for human being to understand themselves first, right, is not fulfilled in education. So if I don't understand myself as a human being, if I don't understand what I have to do as a human being, right, then anybody can decide on me, even technology can decide on me. And in the whole of our education, we are not talking about our own self. Like 15 years of education, 20 years of education, right? What have you studied about yourself? You have studied something about, you know, physics, about electrons, right? That's what I said. When I went to, I think, Anpur in six months, I, you know, to going through the Syllabus, you know, I realized I was in the Department of Electronics and Communication. So I was realized that I realized that I have to study about the electron, I have to study about the diodes, about the transistors, about the amplifiers, right? And nowhere I have to study about myself <laughs> in five years. So they are not even addressing to my question, let alone giving me answers. Right. So what is happening is that there is no scope in the education today for us to understand ourselves. And is it necessary for us to understand ourselves? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because then only we can decide what we have to do with ourselves, what we have to do with our relationship with other human beings, what we have to do with our relationship with the rest of nature. So unless I know about myself, right? Unless I understand myself, how can I understand about the others? How can I understand about my relationship with others? With human beings, with the rest of nature. 
So everything becomes an open-ended question for me then. And if I don't have answers to these questions, right, then I'm just floating in air. And any flow of the wind can take me to its direction. So that is what is happening. The technology is deciding what human beings are going to do. Where is technology is something which we have developed to make our life more meaningful, right? 